hello again I've been asked on my um, website by a couple of people just to have a quick run through how I make the um, make the sled on my for my bandsaw that I use for um, cutting the segments obviously I've got a um, I've got a block here that I can move and clamp to the position that I need for the width of the segment that I need to cut or the length of the segment I need to cut or other and um, and 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 it's got this um, the bar across the top here initially when I first made it I made it so that I could adjust it I made this two depth slot here I made a slot for the bolt and another slot for the um, end of the bolt wouldn't go right away through so that I can move it backwards and forwards to initially initially get it set up to the correct angle. This one's 11.25 degrees which gives me my 16 segment ring. The most important thing really with this apart from that angle which is very important is this runner on the bottom on the bottom of the board that fits in the slot on the bandsaw. So obviously you can make this fit any bandsaw with a slot um, just make it to fit the width of your the width of your table on your bandsaw. But it's quite a small table on this one on my shopsmith bandsaw. Wide slot as opposed to my um I suppose my other bandsaw, my sit bandsaw that I use for redimensioning timber. But this is quite an accurate bandsaw, it cuts a it's, it cuts a, cuts the segments really nicely. So I use that for cutting the segments. And you see I've, I've got this here, I have marked it up, sixteen segments, eleven point two five degrees. So that I know that 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 um, this particular sledge is the one for my 16 segments. Now the way that I go about making it is I just get um, obviously a plain piece of plywood, and I just mark that to make sure it's the same width as the bandsaw table. I mark it underneath. And I, I just cut that on my other bend saw. So I just get back to you and I cut the edge off here so it's the right size. So what I do next, I put the board on the band saw table, make sure it's lined up either side. Well that's not you know, it's not important, but you know. Make sure it's lined up either side. And then on the slot here, this slot in the band saw table, I just sort of roughly mark on on here where it's going to be okay and the other side as well very good I just change that mark that so it's on the on the back side Just to give me an idea where I need to screw the piece of um, piece of timber that's going to run in the slot on the table. On, piece of timber is going to run in the slot on the table here. Right now, two piece of timber that I'm going to use on there. I probably have a bit of um, an off cut around somewhere. Right, so this this piece will do. When you cut this. When you when you cut this, you want a piece that's a bit longer, as you can see on my other on my other one. It's longer. It's longer at the the end, the front end of it, so that when you've got it on the table, and it's right back here, you've still got that support in the slot to stop it wobbling about. Okay, you've got all that timber then in the slot. It's going to make it much less likely to wobble about, even if you've got just a few sort of variations in the width on it. The more you've got in that slot, the more more stable it's going to be. So we put put that in there, so that we can we can have we can have the table we can have this on the table right back here, and it's still reasonably stable on the table. Okay, so that's that's the reason why I cut these longer. So what I need to do. That, that timber actually is just a bit too narrow, so I can't use that bit of timber. 
Similarly, kind of piece. Right, that piece of timber will do the job nicely. It's a bit long, but um, I just cut. I just take a bit off the end of it. So, it's about there. It's on my shop list. So that will make it. I don't know, kind of. Um, I always keep a little bit on the end, on the end here as well, so that as you're pushing it through, it's still got that support as well at this end. So I usually have about about four inches off the back end of the board, four or five inches off the back end of the board, and boy, I don't know what's that, about ten inches off the front, or as much as you need to just go with the board up to the blade, slightly over the table. Okay. It's not rocket science, you don't have to be that accurate with it. The only thing you need to be accurate with is the angle and this, where it fits in the slot. So what I do now, I just take the, take the pencil and I just mark that at both ends to the width of the slot. So I've got a mark here and a mark here for the width of the slot. And I just take a nice straight piece of timber, straight edge piece of timber, and I just mark that along the length. Oh, pencil broke. Right, so with a renewed pencil, we just mark that along the length using the marks that I made at either end from underneath the slot against the edge of the slot. So when I marked it, I brought the pencil under here and marked, had one edge up against the edge here, I put the pencil under here and just marked that inside edge there. So, what I do now, I'll take that to my other bandsaw and I'll just cut that and I'll just cut that down. Right now, I cut down a bit shy of the line so that um, just in case I had any marking errors and it's probably just as well I did because it's now a perfect fit. It doesn't wobble about in the slot, it's a perfect fit in there. It's um, just slightly too deep still at the moment though. So I'll just take it to my bandsaw and just run um, sixteenth of an inch off the edge of it just to bring it up in the slot a little bit. Right so that's a nice nice fit in the slot now. So what we have to do now is to attach that to the back of the board. The back of this board that we've made Okay, what I normally do, um, make sure you bring the, the long end out the front. So what I normally do, to attach this to the board, I normally, okay, so between the marks that I made earlier, I normally just drill three holes, countersink, and put a um, put a wood screw, three wood screws, three countersunk wood screws in there to hold that onto the board. So I'll do that now and um, be back to you in a minute. Right, okay, so what I've done, I've drilled countersunk and screwed this piece of this guide piece of timber that sits in the slot on the bandsaw table to the bottom of this piece of plywood now. Okay, so that fits in this slot nicely. Fits in the slot nicely so that we can keep it accurate to the blade. But what we need to do now, obviously, is we need to um, fix the piece of timber onto here so that we can adjust it to the angle that we want this sledge to cut. 
So obviously if you want to cut an 8 segment ring, say for instance, a nice easy one, then you set the you set the angle to 22 and a half degrees, which would make um, obviously each segment a total of 45 degrees. So um, 8 times 45 is um, 360. If you wanted a 15 segment bowl, say for instance, which would be difficult to send any irregularities out of if you didn't quite get it right, because you wouldn't have two exactly half rings. So a 15 segment ring, which seems to be quite popular in America, then you'd need an angle of 15 degrees. So it'd be 30 degrees per segment total. So obviously you've got two angles on a segment. Okay. So I'll just go through and show you how I'm going to um, fix a piece of timber onto there so that we can use it for use it for um, cutting a particular angle or if you want even adjustable which isn't a terribly good idea because when you adjust the angle it's really difficult to get it exactly right and you might need to, to mess around a little bit. It's much better to make a sledge for each angle you want to cut. So you have a sled say for an 8 segment bowl, you have a sled for a 15 segment bowl and you have a sled for a 16 segment bowl. Well, what, however many you want. I mean the most segments I've made so far was 24 segment, 24 segment bowl. Um, and the angle has to be perfect on that. If the angle's not perfect on that the rings don't fit together properly. Okay so I'll just find a bit of timber now that I can use to um, Obviously, make make the um, the angle on here. Okay, be back. Well, okay, I've managed to find this bit of cherry. Got a, got a bit of a crack in it, so I, I really couldn't use it for um, segments. But it's be all right for using for this. A straight edge on this side. It's been through the planer. You can see my marks on the side. See my marks on the side from when I've been planing it. So it's been through the planer. What we need to do, we need to just we need to fix this at one end so that we can adjust it to the angle that we need. Okay, so what I normally do, I normally try and get it sort of about a third of the way in from the from the back. As I said before, it's not rocket science. It, it doesn't have to be that precise. So I normally try to get this end and I'm putting that about a third of the way in from the end of the board, maybe just under halfway. And then I'll then I'll either fix it there with a screw through it from the back, countersunk from the back, or or I might. I don't do it a lot anymore because, as I say, I don't generally. Make my sleds adjustable anymore. Now where did I put that just now? But anyway, this one will do. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Oh, as I say before, you can make it adjustable by putting a slot through that's the right size for the shank of the bolt, and then taking another bit out, just three hundred a router really, to to countersink it. I mean, that's one, and um, this one here I made um, really could do with a, a <laughs> washer on it though at the moment. I couldn't find a washer the right size, but I'm sure I must have one somewhere. And see, I've, I, I've cut that slot there, and I've taken the router freehand, and I've just made it so that it, it um, countersinks it a bit. So if I had a washer underneath that bolt, it, um, it would be countersunk. It wouldn't catch on the table when you're trying to push it backwards and forwards. I mean, this one here, I made this one with the intention of keeping it so that I could so that I could adjust it, but I decided against it. It's much better to make the sled a certain angle. So, I mean, although this one is adjustable, I can undo this nut here and move it backwards and forwards along there if I want. It is adjustable. It, it, it will never be adjusted now. Uh, similarly, the other one as well. It won't be adjusted again. So I don't. I don't generally now 
worry about putting a slot in the board and um, and countersink in the slot. What I do, I just fix on the other side here with a screw. Oops. With a screw from this side, countersink countersunk the slot. So I just make a countersink. <laughs> I think this lot. Uh, and I'll drill a little pilot as well, I think, because um, it's hardwood, gun is hardwood. And I'll be back to you when I've done it. Right, so that's fixed now from from the end. I can't sunk uh, screw just holding this timber up this end. So I can now still move it back and forwards a bit. I can be back and forth a lot if I want at this end. Right, so what we need to do now, we need to just cut a slot in the board so that we've got a line that we can reference for setting the angle. Okay, so I'll just do that. It's going to get noisy. We've got a reference then for the angle. So this angle here to the line is going to be for the segment we need to cut. I don't know. Um, let's say eight segments. I haven't got one for eight segments. I don't, generally don't go as low as eight segments. But let's say for eight segments. So uh, so I just. Take this to not zero this. I'll just zero this off. Um, zero. Set it to 90 degrees. Oops, not too far. Right, set that to 90 degrees. Then I'll zero it again. Okay. Now I want what is it? Forty five degrees per segment, so twenty two and a half degrees. Okay, and I just take that so I've got twenty two and a half degrees showing on the display. And twenty two and a half degrees showing on the display there now. Okay. Oh, I might just about get it. Now I should have, what I should have done for this one, eight segments, I really need to take this end of the thing a bit further up. Because it's a sharp angle, it's come off the back of the board now. Okay. But, um... What I do, I'll, 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 I'll take it apart again and move that so that it is further forward. But you can see the idea. Okay, we've set the angle on it against that line. So it should be 22 and a half degrees there now. So if I cut eight segments at 22 and a half degrees to the blade, I should have an eight segment ring. So what I would normally do then, I would normally a ring out of some cheap pine or something, some, some gas pine, and just check that it all fits together nicely and snugs up nice and tight in, in the clamp. If it doesn't, well then I can still adjust this a little bit. You know, well I can adjust it a lot. Because it's not fixed at this end yet. And if it's only like a fraction, you just give it a little, little nudge, a fraction one way or a fraction the other way, until you get your ring so that it's perfect fit. And then what you can do drive another screw through from the underneath to hold it in place. I mean I could do that with this now if I wanted to but it doesn't it doesn't look terrific hanging off the end of the board so I won't. I'll move that so it's up there. I'll come back to you when I've done it. Right that's better. So 
Now I can use this to um, set my angle there. I just want to come back a little bit more now. Okay, so setting the angle to the line that we cut, pushing it through the saw. So we know that that is, that is exactly a, a straight line that the saw cuts. So to that straight line that the saw has cut, we can mark our angle against the back piece. Okay, so 22 and a half degrees to that line is there. So what, what I could do now, I could just drill a hole in it now and put a screw through it, just to hold it temporarily, because if you try and cut obviously try and cut segments on it now it could move backwards and forwards anyway so it wouldn't be terrifically accurate you wouldn't know that it was really right you'd only have to move a fraction so what I normally do, I normally just drill a hole through here oh. just drill a hole through there I don't even bother counter sinking it at the moment. There's no need really, it doesn't catch on anything. It's not going to catch on anything. And then um I just find the screw long enough to go through. Okay, that'll go through. until it just catches in the board okay that's in the board so it's not going to move back and forwards now when we try and cut the segments so what I do I find a bit of pine there's a bit of pine I'll just straighten up the other edge in my saw in my back. okay and we need a stop block on here now as well obviously so I'll just pinch the one off of um, one of the other sledges. I've only got a couple of these small clamps. I keep mini to treat myself to one that you can just, you know, ratchet one that I just ratchet up nicely. Don't know if I miss about because sometimes I'm missing about a one end here really, but I just have to try and do it so that I'm not missing about a one end. I don't drop the clamp so much then on the floor. So I just clamp that up there. That's, that's going to be the length of the segment. I'm only testing to see that it's gonna it's gonna um it'd be quite a small ring. I'm only testing to see that it's gonna pull up nicely. So on with the saw. First angle. So that's eight segments. I just check that they're going to fit together. I'm not too worried about it. even standing them at the moment. It's um, I can see I can see if they're going to fit together. I still haven't wasted too much timber there. Just cutting that little ring.
Right, so I can tell from that that at the moment the angle isn't right because the middle is not pulling in. It's too. So I just take my and just check again that. I got exactly right. Uh, maybe I just need to um, need to pull that back just slightly, just a fraction. Pull it back just a fraction. Keep forgetting that when it's right back there, it's not on the table. So I just need to pull this back a fraction. Make sure it's on the table when you push down to undo the screw. Alright, so let's put my uh, still set to 22 and a half degrees. Didn't quite have it in quite the right place. Maybe I'm going to screw down now. Oh. Alright. Now what I find when I when I adjust these, if it's only a fraction that I gotta bring it back, I usually find it's better to cut another hole, drill another hole in it for the screw because when you screw the screw back in it's gonna it's gonna you've only moved it a fraction it's gonna find its well its way back into that other hole that you've just screwed it into so drill another hole We might end up with five or six holes in the end here, doesn't matter. No, not really a problem. But it just makes sure that you, you, you get this, keep this held in place while you cut any test segments. Right, so um, let's put those to the side. and cut another eight. like uh. you never can tell till you get the last segment in But still not quite right. I 
Right, so I've adjusted up the angle again and I've cut eight more test segments. And uh, looks like it's going to be um, pretty much spot on now. <laughs> Just get them all into the right place again. So I can put that together now. Obviously, when they're in a clamp, when they're in the clamp, that's going to be um, pretty much spot on now. Um, there's no gaps there now when I pull them up. Obviously, if you were um, making a 16 segment ring, you might still have a few gaps there. But um, it's, it's good enough, it'll pull up nicely. Uh, and make well, as you can see, that's um, that's how I make my sleds. Two most important bits: this bit that fits in the slot has got to be good fit, and the angle to the blade has got to be spot on. Otherwise, your segments won't fit together. Spend time getting it right. Like I say, all I do, I just drill a hole through, put a temporary screw in there to hold it in place. If that's not right, I take the screw out and I drill another hole because the next time you screw that screw in it's going to follow the first hole you drilled and pull it back into the same place that it was in. So I drill another hole, screw it down temporarily again and until you get that angle right and your, and your segments pull together nicely and then that's it. I won't touch it again after that. I won't try and adjust it. Well, if it goes out, which is very doubtful, it's plywood, it's pretty stable, cherry, nice hardwood, it's pretty stable, I won't touch it again. Eight segments, that'll be my eight segment, I'll write on it, I'll write on it 22.5 degrees, eight segments, and that's what it is, that's what it'll be, it'll be my 22 and a half degree sled, to cut eight segments doesn't matter on the length of the segment the angle is always going to be the same okay anyway, that's in response to just a couple of questions that I've been asked by the website I um, hope you'll um, try to make one yourself I'll say that's pretty simple it's not rocket science accuracy is a reasonably big thing just with this bit that goes in the slot and the angle Everything else doesn't really matter a great deal. You've got your straight line that you cut with this in the slot, so you know that that line is 90 degrees to the edge of the board. So anything you mark off here using your, using your set square or your angle find or whatever you've got is going to be pretty accurate. I mean, like I say, I, I have got that, I set it 22 and a half degrees, but I still had to miss about a little tiny bit, because I was still only eyeing it against that slot. So, you know, a little quarter of a degree out, possibly. You know, it's not it's not hard to do. You can be easily a quarter of a degree out when you're eyeing things up. So, I mean, on a 16 segment, a quarter of a degree would be quite a lot. But, um, about four degrees altogether, isn't it? But there you go. Anyway, that's how I do it. Have fun. Cheerio.